Hi, Peter Salemi. Several years ago, a radio personality called Dr. Laura Schlesinger, I hope I pronounced that correctly, I'll just call her Dr. Laura. Dr. Laura, she had a radio program, and that radio program received about 40 million listeners every single day. Now, at that time, Howard Stern used to boast that he was the king of all media because he was receiving 15 million listeners every single day. But she didn't even come close to Dr. Laura at 40 million listeners. Well, she, of course, she had a big platform, big audience, and she came out one day and she said how the Bible condemns certain lifestyles. Well, of course, you know, celebrities went absolutely crazy. They were on award shows condemning Dr. Laura, making fun of her and so on. And somebody wrote her a letter with 10 arguments. And of course, the tone of this letter was showing her how just how ridiculous the Bible is. It was the old uh, because the Bible says so argument. Just because the Bible says so, you shouldn't believe it. That old argument. So this letter got circulated in the newspapers and so on. And even the West Wing took this letter and put it in one of their episodes. Here, I'm going to show you this clip. Uh, Martin Sheen, who's playing the President of the United States, confronts a person that looks like Dr. Laura and, of course, states many of these arguments. Take a look at this clip. I like your show. I like how you call homosexuality an abomination. I don't say homosexuality is an abomination, Mr. President. The Bible does. Yes, it does. Leviticus. 18.22. Chapter and verse. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions while I had you here. I'm interested in selling my youngest daughter into slavery, as sanctioned in Exodus 21-7. She's a Georgetown sophomore, speaks fluent Italian, always cleared the table when it was her turn. What would a good price for her be? While thinking about that, can I ask another? My chief of staff, Leo McGarry, insists on working on the Sabbath. Exodus 35-2 clearly says he should be put to death. Am I morally obligated to kill him myself, or is it okay to call the police? Here's one that's really important, because we've got a lot of sports fans in this town. Touching the skin of a dead pig makes one unclean. Leviticus 11.7. If they promise to wear gloves, can the Washington Redskins still play football? Can Notre Dame? Can West Point? Does the whole town really have to be together to stone my brother John for planting different crops side by side? Can I burn my mother in a small family gathering for wearing garments made from two different threads? Think about those questions, would you? Are there answers to these arguments? Or is it just a case of the Bible is an ancient book and these are ancient laws for ancient times and it doesn't really apply to us today? Or the old argument, as I just mentioned, because the Bible says so argument. That just because it's in the Bible doesn't mean that it's true or it should be kept. That these are just empty words, random laws with no consequences. Is that the case? Or are these living laws that work upon us automatically, like the law of gravity? The law of gravity works upon us automatically, whether we like it or not. Are these living laws that apply to our nations today, and do they have consequences? Well, we took the liberty of answering each and every one of these arguments, and we'll put the link in the description below, and you can read it for yourself. And we show you that these laws do apply to our modern day today. And we also show you that this letter that was sent to Dr. Laura Schlesinger is filled with many large, Biblical misconceptions.